So this is this painting is actually not not really finished. It's really a draft of uh, a, a picture of a roller coaster, and I thought it's very symbolic for a startup because our life in a startup is very much like a roller coaster. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yes, indeed. indeed. So Ori, it's great to be back here at Sedona Systems in Tel Aviv. Um, you know, we found some uh, great technology here, at, uh, yep. here in your offices, um, harking back to the, the good old days. Uh, and we're going to talk about the, the, the cutting edge technologies you've been developing as well. Uh, but also, I uh, see there's a lot more of your own artwork. Uh, you're you're a, 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 a great painter outside of work. And a lot of your artwork is on the walls here at the Sedona offices. And it seems that, that, that that visual element that you bring to the company is also um, uh, showing in, in the way you've developed the interface to, to, of your product to, to the users. Um, so visualization, that's, that's, that's a great thing, great part of the, the company's development. Indeed, that's a very good observation. Uh, and I think it's crucial uh, to visualize networks in ways that are uh, perhaps not the way that people see them today because these are very complex networks. Okay, excellent. Um, now, the way things are evolving uh, in the industry at the moment, um, you know, uh, Sedona has been talking about a multi-layer control for quite a number of years now, but there's now that, that conversation is now happening alongside uh, orchestration uh, and network and service orchestration. So can you give us a little bit of insight as to, to why these two topics are now being talked about in the in, in the same conversation at the same time. Yes, absolutely. Um, when we started uh, a couple of years back, uh, the uh, view that uh, architects and um, standard bodies have drawn was a very simple view of the network. You had the network elements uh, down below. People were focusing a lot on the interfaces to the network elements, and the whole SDN control system was drawn as one big uh, box. Right. Um, and uh, over time, uh, this uh, uh, simplified view had been ref refined, and uh, people have started drawing controllers uh, for each uh, uh, network layer. So a Cisco controller for Cisco gear, a Juniper controller for, for Juniper gear, and a multi-layer controller on, on uh, top of this. Mm -hmm. And this made a lot of sense because you want to allow the uh, system vendors uh, that own the network elements to, uh, to uh, innovate. You want Cisco to be able to add segment routing to their portfolio, for example. Sure. Um, now, uh, what we're seeing now is that uh, even this box of uh, multi-layer control is now split into uh, two parts. There's a network controller which controls the network, is in charge of the network, and then there's a service orchestrator on top of it which is in charge of uh, instantiating and uh, controlling services. And that makes a lot of sense because it adds the IT to the equation. So it's not only the network guys uh, looking at this uh, control system, but also the IT guys. And IT guys are uh, interested in services, in interfaces to the uh, IT systems on top. Um, how is Sedona evolving as, as the market evolves? What, what role are you playing then in, the, in this new era of orchestration and, and multi-layer control? As you know, the, uh, our f uh, focus uh, initially was to build a multi-layer control system that really talks to the routers, all routers, most of the optical uh, gear and coordinate between the two layers to achieve an optimized uh, multi-layer network. Now, when you take the uh, view of how do we interface to the IT systems, um, uh, we've built interfaces, northbound interfaces from uh, our controller to be able to feed those uh, IT systems with whatever information they need, whether it's inventory inf information about the network or uh, enabling those service orchestrators to set up services um, in the network. What kind of developments have you made in terms of the, the Sedona platform to, to be able to, to help operators move to that next stage? What, what have been the next steps in your evolution? Yeah. One of the uh, key tenets of our solution was that uh, you don't have to uh, wait for SDN to happen before you can start uh, right. reaping the benefits. Uh -huh. Of it, so from the get-go, we uh, developed uh, um, interfaces to SDN controllers as well as to management systems of all sorts, 
uh, EMSs of different uh, network gear. We even talk to network elements directly when there's no other uh, way to communicate to, uh, right. with the gear. So really not waiting for SDN to happen before adding value, but rather bridging the gap between today's uh, systems where SDN is not there to the future where SDN controllers will be prevalent and uh, our job will become a lot easier. Um, so that evolution from today to tomorrow's SDN-enabled network is a key principle that uh, we've designed our system around. Now, uh, this was the, uh, the platform as, uh, as uh, you know it. What we've added um, uh, more recently is the ability for operators to use the uh, system on a, on a daily basis for even more man mundane tasks. You know, an operator wants to see whether the, the network has uh, sufficient diversity. Um, they don't want to uh, sift through a very complicated uh, network view, but they want uh, somebody to simply tell them, you have this problem in your network, now, now go solve it. What we're adding now and, um, uh, in, in, the, uh, in the solution is also the ability to act on these, on these anomalies uh, in an automated fashion. So basically, you see something wrong in your net network, click a button, a fix button, and uh, the tool will fix the, uh, the problem for you. Okay, so you've got some analytics capabilities you're providing visibility into the network and then you're adding automation capabilities as well. Yeah, I think the way, the way to look at it is in, uh, in uh, phases. Again, we're trying to build a solution that allows uh, people to start from a very simple solution that still provides value to them and add more capabilities as they uh, feel more comfortable with the technology. And uh, the key is that you want to add value at each step of the way to fuel uh, the, uh, the, this growth. So the starting point is, as you said, just visibility. We, we were very surprised, I was certainly uh, surprised to see how many uh, uh, service providers don't have a good view of their entire network. They, right. they, they see islands, but they're in the dark in terms of how the, uh, these islands connect uh, to each other. So that in itself adds a lot of value. Um, we've now added analytics to it, which basically allows to, uh, people to write very simple scripts that uh, um, uh, look for uh, anomalies in the network. So ha I'm a planner, I've designed my network to do certain things in a certain way. Uh, have the operations guys actually built the network the way I'm expecting it uh, to be right. built. The reality is it's not always the case. So bring out those, those issues uh, uh, for me to, uh, to understand. And also the other uh, use for these, for these uh, scripts is to provide insights into the network. How can my, I plan my network differently to better fit the actual needs of the network. So these are analytics uh, uh, tools. Uh, the next step beyond that is automation. And even automation um, is done in, uh, in a stepwise uh, fashion. So starting with uh, simple automation, let's just uh, um, fix a few attributes that are, are wrong in the system. Provide routers with information about shared risk groups from the optic layer, for example, so it can make more intelligent decisions about the uh, uh, routing of, of IP traffic. Um, reroute optical paths so that they better fit the needs of the IP layer. Right. Uh, so this is small automation. And then the, uh, uh, if you will, the holy grail of multi-layer control, the uh, big automation features, which is around uh, multi-layer restoration, restoring traffic uh, using the optical layer as well as the IP layer, optimizing the network as a whole. So that's really where the network works in a different way than it, uh, than it does today. Well, let's go and take a couple of look at, at these uh, the new tools that Sedona has developed. Absolutely. So Ori, which application are we looking at on, uh, on the screen here? So we're looking now at the NetFusion Explorer application, which is our user interface. It basically shows you the network uh, two layers. The uh, top uh, blue layer is the routers and the bottom layer, the boxes, are the optical gear. What you can see here is, well, you can obviously look at just the IP layer, and that's what the IP guys okay. normally see, or just the optical layer, which is, again, what the optical guys would normally see. Uh, but none of them has this, this uh, combined uh, view of, of the network. And this is the visibility that you were talking about? And this, this is the visibility that okay. I was uh, talking about, indeed. I can click here on an optical uh, link, like this one, and... Uh, it turns orange and, and you see all the um, IP paths uh, in green that are uh, riding over that optical link. So if that optical link fails, all of those paths go down. Oh, right, okay. And that's already multi-layer information that's not very easy to get uh, otherwise. Or I can click on this IP link here uh, from Washington to Denver and see how it goes through the optical uh, devices through Chicago and Kansas City, etc. And uh, moreover, I can look at the uh, traffic that runs over that IP link. So let's look at the LSPs. Pick an LSP from, I don't know, Boston uh, to Denver, for example. And uh, 
and you can see here on the side on the side view here that this LSP starts from Boston, goes through a couple of routers, then goes through an optical path between uh, Boston and uh, New York, goes up to a router in New York, then goes uh, again through the optical to a router in uh, Washington, and so on and for so forth until it reaches uh, Denver at the other end. Clearly, you can't show a few thousands of nodes in this view in a way that anybody will see anything, right? Right. Okay. The view will turn black. So, uh, so what uh, we we uh, can do is we can uh, have a hierarchy. And basically, let's look at North California here. As I zoom in, uh, you see that uh, North California being uh, one side on, on this view here will uh, split into a bunch of uh, sites that are more regional sites, if you will, right. San Jose and San Francisco. And, uh, and that way, uh, you, can, you can understand a large network uh, as you zoom in. Right? Very similar to how you would see a map in Google, yes. uh, for example. Let's perhaps now look at uh, some of the new stuff we've added and we discussed earlier, which, for example, analytics. So I have here a bunch of applications. The Explorer is what we've seen just now. Let's look at the dashboard. So dashboard is one place where you want to uh, look at when you come in the morning, see whether the network is still fine. Right? So you go to the dashboard, and our dashboard shows a bunch of um, um, boxes, each of them representing an anomaly. This is for the, an example for a dashboard for the planners okay. to understand whether the rules have been respected by operations. So for example, you see here that there's one LSP, uh, a pair of LSPs that should be diverse from each other, but they actually have, uh, they share a risk in the optical layer, they share an SRG. Or you see an IP, a congested IP links, or IP links that should have been diverse and are not diverse from each other. And these are these uh, little scripts that I mentioned earlier that you can write, and the, you write the script, you upload it, and you have, you know, whatever you want, the, another anomaly on the screen. And you can ex explore uh, through this. So let's, let's look, for example, at this uh, LSPs uh, with common SRG. Let's look at the actual report. So you see here one line, it could be many, many lines, but showing a primary LSP, a secondary LSP, and here's the shared optical links between those LSPs that should have been diverse. What I want to show you now is, the, if you will, the next step, uh, what I call the small automation. I, f I should find a better term for it. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I think, that, I so, think people will understand that. <laughs> so, so I know that there's a problem. I have a fix button. What does the fix button do? I can just click it, and it will uh, run an application that synchronizes the SRGs uh, that are taken from the optic layer with the IP layer. So what we've done now is we've provisioned the routers with um, these SRGs, and the routers will realize, oh, these two LSPs are not really diverse. They're going to the same risk and will reroute uh, traffic. Right. Okay. So, so that's where, uh, let's, go, let's go back to the map. That's where uh, we've automated, if you will, the, um, um, the, the uh, provisioning of these attributes in the, uh, in the IP layer. B because this environment uh, involves uh, virtual routers of different sorts uh, that actually run uh, run the code, it uh, might take a bit of time, uh, but uh, let's revisit the dashboard. Oh, and you see this problem is no longer, does no longer exist. The uh, routers have gotten this new information, have reconverged, have rerun their control plane, rerouted the LSPs. We have now uh, rerun the uh, script automatically, and you see the result here. So a lot of steps to, uh, are involved in this very uh, simple operation from a, from a user perspective. Okay, excellent. <laughs> Great to see you again, Ori, and thanks very much for bringing us up to speed with what's going on at Sedona. Thanks for coming.